हरे कृष्णा ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इसकॉन बोटेनिकल गार्डन मैन वी फील वेरी प्रिविलेज एंड प्राउड टू हैव हिज होलीनेस पंथ विज्ञान नेशनल सिमा महाराज वन ऑफ द इनिशिएटिंग गुरुस ऑफ इसकॉन एंड आल्सो अ very motivated preacher throughout the world so we are very fortunate to have maharaj with us and i would like to thank all of you for being here especially those who are from the mainland of china we have a big crowd here and there are more to come so without further delay i humbly invite solinas patil national center of maharaj to begin the session with bhajan and with spiritual discourse hari krishna hari krishna jay radha madhava kunj bihari गोपी जान बाला गोपी जान बाला यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन मुन चीरा वन चाहन चीरा वन चाहधा जय गोपी जान बाला गोपी जान बाला यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन जन हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 
भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधेर नस्त प्रयेशु पद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत से भया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नष्ट की सो वे आर कंटिन्यूइंग their study of the shrimad bhagavatam and we're on canto 1 chapter number 13 dhritarashtra quits home text number 54 di di pian di shishan jang o shishi shiji जितासनो जितास्वासा जितासनो चितासनो चितास्वासा प्रत्यारिता सद इंद्रिया हरि बाबा नया द्वस्ता राज सद्वाथमो मला 
Jitasano Jitaswasa Jitasano Jitaswasa Pratyarita Sad Indriya Hari Bhavanaya Dvasta Raja Sadvatamo Mala Jita Asana, one who has controlled the sitting posture. Jita Swatha, one who has controlled the breathing process. Pratyarita, turning back. Sat, Sat six, six. Indriya, Indriya senses, senses. Hari, Hari the absolute personality of Godhead, Bhavanaya absorbed in, Dvasta conquered. conquered. Raja, Raja, passion, passion sattva, sattva, goodness, goodness tama, tama, ignorance, ignorance mala, mala, contamination. Translation, one who has controlled the sitting postures, the yogic, the yogic asanas and the breathing process can turn the senses towards the Absolute Personality of Godhead and thus become immune to the contamination of the modes of material nature, namely mundane goodness, passion and ignorance. Purport by 
His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The preliminary activities of the way of yoga are asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dhyana, dharana, etc. Maharaj Dhritarashtra was to attain success in those preliminary actions because he was seated in a sanctified place and was concentrating upon one objective, namely the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari. Thus all his senses were being engaged in the service of the Lord. This process directly helps the devotee to get freedom from the contaminations of the three material modes of nature. Even the highest mode, the material mode of goodness, is also a cause of material bondage. And what to speak of the other qualities, namely passion and ignorance. Passion and ignorance increase the material propensities of hankering for material enjoyment and a strong sense of lust provokes the accumulation of wealth and power. One who has conquered these two base mentalities and has raised himself to the platform of goodness which is full of knowledge and morality cannot also control the senses, namely the eyes, the tongue, the nose, the ear and touch. But one who has surrendered himself unto the lotus feet of Lord Hari, as above mentioned, can transcend all influences of the modes of material nature and be fixed in the service of the Lord. The Bhakti Yoga process, therefore, directly applies the senses to the loving service of the Lord. This prohibits the performer from engaging in material activities. This process of turning the senses from material attachment to the loving transcendental service of the Lord is called pratyahara and the very process is called pranayama, ultimately ending in samadhi or absorption in pleasing the Supreme Lord Hari by all means. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurabhena Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanitam Scha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastade Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari 
Vrishabhanavusatehevi Pranamami Hari Priye Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavali Pastachate Sathalini Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasati Kaurabhavinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing about Maharaj Dhritarashtra, how Maharaj Dhritarashtra had been living first of all in the, in the palace along with the Pandavas. Even after the battle of Kurukshetra when all of his 100 sons had been killed, still Dhritarashtra remained living there in the palace eating the remnants of Bhima. So Vidura was merciful to Dhritarashtra and Vidura came back to help Dhritarashtra achieve a better destination in his next life. Dhritarashtra was born blind materially and spiritually he was blind also. And he had committed a lot of offences against devotees. And because of his offences against devotees, he he, because of his offences against devotees, he, Vidura was not able to instruct him in bhakti yoga because he was so contaminated by his offences. So he could not take up the process of bhakti yoga. Therefore, Vidura guided him and taught him this astanga yoga process the eight stages of meditation, eight stages of yoga practice culminating in samadhi or fixed mind. So Vidura gave his mercy to Dhritarashtra in this way. He Dhritarashtra and Vidura were brothers. They were both, there were three brothers. Initially Pandu was also there. So there was Pandu, Dhritarashtra and Vidura. But Vidura was born in the womb of a Sudra woman. So he was not on an equal level in regard to the royal family. Pandu and Dhritarashtra, they were princes and they were to become the kings. But Vidura was born in the womb of the maidservant woman. But they were all conceived by the semen of Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva had fathered all three of the boys. So Vidura was a great soul. He had been driven out of the palace by Duryodhan and he had taken that as a blessing and he was able to go and visit all holy places and to associate with many great devotees. And we read in the third canto, fourth canto about Vidura 
how he is associating with Maitreya. First of all, Vidura had gone to Uddhava, but Uddhava had requested him to go to Maitreya and to take instruction from Maitreya. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we hear a lot of conversations between Vidura and Maitreya. Vidura is putting the questions and Maitreya is answering. So here in the verse tonight, we are told how Dhritarashtra was able to get free of the modes of nature, the material modes of nature, particularly passion and ignorance. Srila Prabhupada also commented about the modes of passion and ignorance in his arrival poem when he landed in the, in the docks at Boston. He wrote how most of the population in the Western country are covered by the modes of passion and ignorance. And Prabhupada reflected, I do not know how they will ever be able to understand the message of Vyasadeva. So very difficult if you are influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance very difficult to understand books like Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is a Paramahamsa literature and it's meant for those who have given up all envy. Dharma Projita Kaitava Nirmatsaranam Satam that the Srimad Bhagavatam completely rejects all cheating religions and it is understandable those who are by those who are pure at heart and free of envy. So if we are influenced by these modes of passion and ignorance then it's very difficult for us to come up to the transcendental platform. It's a long way up. We have to gradually come up to the mode of goodness and then transcend from the mode, mode of goodness, come to the mode of pure goodness. Prabhupada points out even the mode of goodness is not very desirable for a devotee. But if we can transcend even goodness, and come to the level of pure goodness, then that is the platform for devotional service. Of course, to get free of the modes of nature is a challenge because the modes of nature are Krishna's energy. They're very, very powerful. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes Devi hi esha gunamai mama maya duratyaya. Right? Duratyaya means very difficult to overcome this maya. Very difficult. Why? Because it's mama maya, it's Krishna's maya, Krishna's energy. So it's very powerful. How can we ever overcome such a power? It is only possible by the mercy of Lord Krishna and his devotees. If we can get the mercy from Lord Krishna or Krishna's devotees, then they can free us from the modes of nature. They can free us from the, the gunas, Guna means rope. So if you're tied up in ropes, it's very difficult to get free. You need someone to come to free you. So Lord Krishna may come as he did for Arjuna or 
the devotee, the representative of Lord Krishna may come and free the devotee. We need to take advantage of that association. Lord Krishna says, Devihi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratyaya Mam Eva Ye Prapajyante Mayam Itam Tarantite. Lord Krishna says that if we surrender to Him, then we can easily cross beyond it. So what is very difficult by our own endeavour becomes very easy when we surrender to Lord Krishna or Lord Krishna's devotees. So Srila Prabhupada is commenting in the purport here about the process of bhakti yoga, how we engage the senses in the service of Lord Krishna. By using our senses in the service of Lord Krishna, then we can come, we can be on the transcendental platform. But we have to be fixed on that transcendental platform. In the Bhagavad Gita again, Lord Krishna says, Mam chayo vayabhicharena bhakti yogena sevate Sagunam samatit jaikam brahma bhuyaya kalpate That one who engages in my devotional service without falling down, then they come to the level of brahma. So that is the power of engaging in devotional service, engaging our senses in devotional service. Now Dhritarashtra, he, he is being instructed in the process of Astanga Yoga, stopping the senses. First of all, asana, then pranayama, well even before asana, yama and niyama, then asana, pranayama, asana, making the body flexible so you can sit to meditate and then pranayama, you have to sit with the back straight, not falling asleep. You have to sit and concentrate the mind, pressing the nose. Prabhupada describes the pranayama process is the, the nose pressing yoga. Mm -hmm. Press one nostril, then press the other nostril, and in this way control the airs flowing in and out of the body. It's a mechanical process to control the mind. So then after pranayama comes pratyahara, Pratyahara means to detach ourselves from all the external objects around us. Generally, we you know we're conscious of what's happening around me. We look at people, we look at the things, and we see who, who's coming, who's going. You're looking, we notice all these things. But pratyahara is to detach ourselves from these things not to notice the external, but to turn the attention within. Prajahara dharana, again, for the concentration of the mind. And then dhyana, actual meditation on the super soul. The seventh stage of yoga is meditation, where you fix the mind on the form of the super soul. The super soul means the Lord in the heart. So Dhritarashtra was able to do this. He fixed his mind on the super soul and he achieved, went on to attain samadhi, fixed trance, fixed mind. So 
the process of controlling the senses is preliminary stage in the yoga practice. It's the beginning, the first steps there. But it's not the ultimate goal. But to come to the ultimate goal, we have to have control over the senses. If we have not controlled our senses, then we won't be able to achieve the higher goals, which is to fix our mind on the Personality of Godhead. So controlling the senses, of course we have to control the tongue. Every day we are reciting a prayer which everyone knows, right? <laughs> this one prayer nobody forgets. So this prayer is of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. It is very difficult to conquer over the tongue in this world. But you, dear Lord Krishna, are so kind. You have sent us this nice prasadam, like that. So the prayer which is given to us by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, our great Acharya in the Parampara, he composed this prayer because although we are taking prasadam, we are taking food which has been offered to Krishna, but before we take prasadam, we need to purify our consciousness. We have to purify our consciousness because the tendency is to take, to honor prasadam, but to honor it just for our sense pleasure and not for our purification, not for the satisfaction of Lord Krishna. So we have to recite this prayer which helps us to remember why we're taking prasadam and to remind ourselves that the food we're taking is spiritual food. It is not ordinary but it is actually spiritual. It has been offered to Lord Krishna. Like that this is one of our activities to control the tongue honoring prasadam in the right consciousness. So controlling the senses is always a challenge. We're living in a very materialistic environment, so the mode of passion is very strong. The earth planet is situated in the middle of the universe. The upper planets are more the mode of goodness and the lower planets are more the mode of ignorance. The earth planet is much more of the mode of passion than any other mode. We're very active, we have many desires and we're very busy trying to satisfy and fulfill all of our different desires. So the mode of passion has to be purified, it has to be pure, has to, we have to try to elevate ourselves from the mode of passion to the mode of goodness. Of course, we can also try to immediately go up to the transcendental platform from the mode of passion, if we can go up to the mode of pure goodness. But that requires to perform devotional service without deviation, without gaps. Devotional service is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Savai uh, Pumsam Parodharmo Yato bhaktir ad hoc saje ahaitaki apratihata yayatma suprasidati. Devotional service is being described by 
Sutta Goswami in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam is responding to the questions by the sages of Naimasharanya. And he is telling us that the supreme occupation to attain is loving service unto the Supreme Lord. Such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So devotional service is described that it's the supreme occupation. It's the topmost occupation. You know, we think, oh no, doctors are top, top doctors are good job, or, you know, maybe a lawyer's a good job, or, you know, we, we think what's a good job today, we have this material vision. But according to Srimad Bhagavatam, according to Srila Vyasadeva, he is telling us the supreme occupation is devotional service. And then he goes on to describe the characteristics of this devotional service. He said it should be ahaitaki and apratihata. It must be unmotivated. In material life, it particularly in the mode of passion, we're very motivated. We want to know, what will I get? How much will you pay me? What will you give me if I do this? We expect something in return for service. But devotional service is different. Devotional service is done without any expectation of anything in return. And devotional service should also be uninterrupted. In other words, it should be constant. Hmm? We talk about the convenience stores, 24 hours open, seven days a week, 24-7. Hmm? So devotional service should be something like that. Of course, that allows, we're allowed also to take rest, you have to get some sleep in order to keep the body fit and healthy for the service of Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna says, don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. Take what you need, just like in taking prasada, take what you need. Some people need to eat more and others can eat less. Take what is required. Don't take more, don't take less. And so that like this we have to balance our activities of the senses. There has to be some regulation in using the senses. This body is given to us by the grace of the Supreme Lord. He is known as Rishikesh. He is the proprietor of the senses. So our senses belong to Him. They're meant to be used for His service. And we should learn how to use our different senses for the service of the Supreme Lord. A nice example is Maharaj Ambarish. Maharaj Ambarish used all of his different senses very carefully in the service of the Supreme Lord. He used his hands to clean the temple and he used his legs to walk to the holy places and to walk to the temple and to dance in the kirtan for the pleasure of the deities. He used his eyes to see the beauty of the deity. With his nose he would smell the flowers and the incense offered to the deities. With his tongue he would recite 
the glories of the Supreme Lord. So Maharaj Ambarish was using all of his different senses for activities for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Bhakti Yoga is not very difficult, but it, it's, it's not easy also because the problem is we are influenced by the material energy. We are conditioned souls and condition means we've been in this material world for a long time trying to enjoy the material energy. We have developed many different habits. People have a lot, we have a lot of habits in the material world and it's difficult sometimes to change these habits. That makes devotional service a challenge for us. So for someone who is not able to engage themselves fully in the activities of devotion, beginning with hearing and chanting, then they can take to this process which was given to Dhritarashtra. Because Dhritarashtra, as I said, he'd been offensive, he'd offended the devotees. So because of that, he was very contaminated and he was not able to understand the transcendental nature of the personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna had personally been there and he he'd, he'd met with Lord Krishna, but he was not able to surrender to Lord Krishna. He was not able to understand the glory of Lord Krishna because of his offenses. And he went on to be more and more offensive. He was so attached to his own sons and he tried and he encouraged his sons in so many ways to try to kill the Pandavas, to take them away, to remove them. So that was very offensive. And the re reaction was he did not have an attraction to devotional service. And we see people come to Krishna consciousness, it happens. Some people, they don't want to hear and chant. They don't want to join in the kirtan. They are being punished by Yamara. If they're not attracted to the Sankirtan, they're not attracted to the, the transcendental movement of Lord Chaitanya. It must be due to sinful reactions from the past. And they're not allowed to be attracted to these activities. These activities are meant for those who have the purified brain. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is described. It's in the eleventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. One of the nine Yogendras, a sage named Karabhajana Muni, he was asked to describe the Lord's incarnations in each age. He was being asked by someone called Nimi Raj, King Nimi. He wanted to know about the Lord's appearance in each of the ages, each of the four ages, the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga and Kali Yuga. So the Karapajana Muni described to the king he told them, Krishna Varnam Tivish A Krishnam Sangopan Rishtra Parshadam Yagnae Sankirtan Prae Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. 
this verse by Karapajana Muni is describing how the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga. That his activities are Krishna Varna. Just like someone may be Brahmana Varna or Kshatriya Varna, this he is describing that in the Kali Yuga, when the Lord comes, his activities will be Krishna Varna. They will all be in relation to Lord Krishna. He will be chanting the name of Krishna and he will be speaking constantly the glories of Krishna. His business will only be Krishna activities, no other business. And Karabhajana Muni also describes the color of the Lord, that in the Kali Yuga, that he will be Lord Krishna, but he will be a different color from Lord Krishna. Krishna Varnam Tivish Akrishna. Krishna means blackish, but the Lord coming in the Kali Yuga will not be blackish. He will be a different color. He will be a golden color. And he will come along with his associates. Whenever the Lord comes, he never comes alone. He's always in the company of his very intimate associates or devotees. So Lord Krishna came. Some devotees appeared before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There were senior devotees, people like Advaita Acharya and Srivas Pandit and then Pundarik Vijanidhi. Lord Nityananda also came before Lord Chaitanya came. They all came to this world because they knew that Lord Krishna is going to come in his most merciful form. He is going to come to spread the Sankirtan movement. So Krishna Varnam Tevish Akrishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yagnae Sankirtan Praye the, 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 the yagna, the, the actual sacrifice in the Kali Yuga is Sankirtan. There is no other sacrifice possible in the Kali Yuga. It's only Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. This sac sacrifice can be performed by people everywhere and anywhere, at any time and any place. Other sacrifices have so many conditions, so many restrictions. You have to be pure, so many different obligations are there. But Sankirtan can be done purified or un impurified. Everyone can take part in it. And it said everyone who joins in the Sankirtan, then Yagnai Sankirtan Praye Yajantihi Sumedasaha. Their intelligence is described as Sumedasaha, that it is pure intelligence. Those who worship other gods, in the Bhagavad Gita, their intelligence is described as Alpa Medasaha. Alpa means very meager, very small. They have a brain, but it's very small. And that's why they're worshipping other gods, other than the Supreme Lord. But those people who, whose brains are purified, Sumedasaha, they will take part in the Sankirtan. And Sankirtan means the chanting of the names of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. One time it happened, it's described that 
Narada Muni in his previous life, even before he became the son of a maidservant, before that he was a Gandharva. And he was very good looking and very proud of his good looks and good singing which he could do. And he was in the, it happened that one time he was in the company of some beautiful heavenly ladies and they were going to a party somewhere in the heavenly planets. But there were other people there, there were some prajapatis. The prajapatis are senior, very senior in the universe and they have the responsibility to to produce good population, to fill up the universe. And they also show proper behavior and make sure that people also behave properly. But this Gandharva, who later on became Narada Muni, he was joking because he saw the beautiful ladies there and he was attracted by them and he began to flirt with them and to make some contact with them and in a joking manner he began to sing the names of the demigods. So to sing the names of the demigods was an offense and the Prajapatis when they saw him behaving in this way then they cursed him and they cursed him that he should take birth, his next birth, he should be born the son of a maidservant woman. Now he was a Gandharva. Gandharvas are residents of a higher planet in the universe. It's even above heaven. It's one of the higher planets in the universe where the Gandharvas are. But he got cursed because of his behavior and he had to take birth from the womb of a Sudra lady, a Sudrani. She was a maidservant woman. It was a low birth but it was a blessing because Narada Muni at that time he was able to get the opportunity to serve some devotees and to learn from them about devotional service. So the point is we, we have to be very careful how we behave and when we chant the names of the Lord we have to understand that the name we chant the names of the Supreme Lord, Krishna Kirtan. We don't chant any other, na any other names of course, Lord Krishna has many names and we can chant all of his different names. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given us beautiful songs to sing which is made up of the names of Lord Krishna. And we can sing these songs and be greatly benefited and purified by singing the names of Lord Krishna. But if we sing other names, it is not so good for us. It will restrict the growth of our bhakti. Just like I was explaining that Dhritarashtra was not able to cultivate bhakti directly. He had to go through the Astanga Yoga process to develop some bhakti. But if we avoid these, uh, these kind of offenses, then we can take to the process of bhakti and immediately come to the transcendental platform. It's, a, it's just like going up the stairs or taking the lift up the stairs. Now if somebody is living on the 20th floor of an, of an apartment building, you will not like to walk up 20 flights of stairs unless you're very 
energetic and you want to get some exercise, but usually we'll all take the lift to go upstairs. So bhakti is like going in the lift. We simply take back the process of devotion. You just get in that lift and you start hearing and chanting and you can come to the topmost level of devotion. But if we don't go through the Astanga Yoga process, then that is the indirect process. It's going to take more time. It's going to take time. You can read in Srimad Bhagavatam, it tells about one man, Kardama Muni. He was doing Astanga Yoga in the Satya Yuga. So Satya Yuga was other Yugas it was more possible to do Astanga Yoga. Today to get people to do Astanga Yoga, very difficult. Why? Because Chanchalahi Mana Krishna. The mind is very restless. And even Arjuna, when he heard about the process from Lord Krishna, he said, well, I cannot do this. It's not possible for me. My mind is more restless than the wind. So how could I ever control it to do this kind of concentration of meditation? Somehow Dhritarashtra was able to do it by the blessings of Vidura. He got that association and he got out from the home. You see nowadays people do Astanga, where do they do it? in the home, close the curtains, and, yeah, air room, and pretend, you know, I'm on the mountain. It's all imitation, this cheating yoga. In the Bhagavad Gita it describes what are the principles for practicing yoga. You go away from the world to a quiet, lonely place and you go alone and you sit on the deer skin and you concentrate the mind. So people talk Astanga Yoga, it's a joke really. <laughs> Nobody's going out of the home. They're doing some yoga exercises. And some people do pranayama, but they do it just like, you know, there's an other society, they teach pranayama. And it's, it's not spiritual, they're teaching pranayama for health reasons, for physical health. They're not teaching you how to meditate, how to go on from pranayama to prajahara. They're not teaching that. They're simply teaching you press the nose, control the air, relax, feel peaceful. <laughs> this is their idea of spiritual practice. Peace. Yes, preliminary phase of yoga practice. It's very low level of spiritual practice. It's not actually even spiritual. But it's a beginning coming towards, make it easier for people to come to spiritual practice. So we want to understand what is actually spiritual practice. A spiritual practice involves chanting the holy name, the Sankirtan, the practice of Sankirtan. You do this chanting regularly. That is spiritual practice. And that is how you can come to the topmost level of yoga. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna concludes the sixth chapter 
After describing the different yogas, he said, Yogi mam apisarvesham madgaten antaratmanam. Shradavan bhajate yomam same yuktatamo mata. Lord Krishna is saying, of all yogis, the topmost yogi is the one who is always absorbed in thinking of me within himself and engaged in my transcendental loving service. This yogi is considered the highest of all. So, Lord Krishna had been describing in the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, he'd been describing the yoga ladder, that there's a progression of yoga. It's wrong to think, oh, it's all yoga, they're all the same. They're not all the same. There's a progression, on, like on a ladder, there's different levels of yoga. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes even karmakanda. Now, karmakanda is a totally material activity. Just like if you go to these temples near here, you know, they're generally engaged in karmakandi activities. You can hear the bell ringing and people will go, they will break the coconuts, they will do these things they will do karmakandi activities. They're doing some ritual to get some material benefit, some kind of material benefit. It's not spiritual. You want spirituality, you have to understand who is spiritual. So Lord Krishna is the Supreme Spirit. And this was appreciated by Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, you are, he said, param brahm, par, param dham, pavitram, paramambhama. You are the Supreme Brahman. You are the Supreme Abode. And Arjuna said, not only am I saying this, but in the past so many great sages have also said it. Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada, they've all said that you are the Supreme. And Arjuna said, now I also understand this to be true myself. So we have to know who is, what is spirit, you see? We are also spirits, but we are tiny spirit. We are tiny souls. We are called Jiva. And the size of the soul is described in the Shastra to be one ten thousandth of the tip of a hair. It's very small. Lord Krishna is the Parabrahman. He is the Supreme Brahman. He is like the fire and we are like a little spark which comes from the fire. We have to understand our position in relation to Lord Krishna. Of course, because we are influenced by the modes of nature, we are also influenced by ego and we have false ego. It is one of the elements of material nature. It is called ahankar. So the mind, intelligence and false ego make up the subtle body of the living entity. That ego has to be controlled, it has to be purified. False ego is to identify with the material body. We identify, if we identify with our body, I am you know, what is it, one meter, one meter eighty or something, or two meters, maybe, you may, maybe you're big, two meters. <laughs> you're like that, we identify with the material body. That's false ego. But true ego, to understand, I am lower than the blade of grass. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, we should think of ourselves lower than the blade of grass and be more tolerant than the tree. So why lower than the blade of grass? Because that is the, our spiritual dimension. How tall are you? You can tell, I am one ten thousand, the tip of the hair. Right? That is our real dimension. That is our true ego. To understand that I am a tiny soul which is eternally related to Lord Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us, Jivarsvarupahaya Nitya Krishna Das, that our constitutional position is to be the servant of Lord Krishna. So we want to have that consciousness. But because we're influenced by passion and ignorance, we develop the demoniac qualities. We develop the qualities of the asura. Instead of the qualities of the devotee, we develop the quality of the demon. The demon is thinking, Ishwaraham Mahambogi. Just, just terrified just to hear about demons, you see. <laughs> the thought of the demon. So Ishwaraham, the de demonic person, thinks, I am the controller, I am the enjoyer, I am Siddoham, I am perfect, I am strong and I am happy. This is the illusion of the materialist. Of course, we want to be happy, but we have to understand what is real happiness. Happiness is not just what we think is pleasing to our body. Real happiness is awakened within. When we look within at the spiritual self, when we see our soul, ourself as a soul, then we can understand what is real happiness. And the happiness comes from connecting our soul to the Supreme Soul. That is the perfection of yoga, that is samadhi, to connect, to link our soul to the Supreme Soul. Just like I said, spark from the fire. If the spark comes out of the fire, then it can easily be extinguished. If it falls in water, it will be extinguished. You want to keep the spark in the fire. You want to be connected with the fire. We need to be connected with Lord Krishna. We need to be engaged in devotional activities. We need to practice hearing and chanting. And in this way, we can also control our mind and senses and come to the perfection of yoga. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, yes. Hello, 在佛法里面，他们也有打坐和冥想，他们并不属于瑜伽范畴，是吗？因为瑜伽是要和至尊主连接，这样理解对吗？Yes, she is asking about how people in practice of Ashtanga Yoga 
they meditate on the super soul and the Buddhists they don't meditate on the super soul they just they but they practice meditation they said meditation so she's asking about that what is their situation yes it is well there's different points to be understood you see that people in Astanga Yoga they may be meditating on the super soul but sometimes they think I am the super soul they come to the conclusion that I am the super soul that I'm the impersonalism that we're all God you see so that is wrong if they actually understand that the super soul is the supreme lord and we are a tiny part and we are the servant and he's the master then after realizing the super soul then we will begin to engage in devotional service but in buddhism you see the buddhists their concept is nir nirvishesha void nothing if you ever listen to the Buddhist masters give lectures they will never speak about anything about they will never mention God they will mention only Kong right? <laughs> Kong, Kong means the void they, they will only mention about the void the void the void you know you just only say Kong Kong so their meditation is on Kong blank everything blank nothing because their teaching is you are not real and the world is not real and nothing is real so you take a brick and beat them on the head and tell them it's not real <laughs> so we have to understand their meditation there's no harm there's no good also it's not spiritual they're not doing any harm now let them go and sit in the corner you know <laughs> leave them to, for eternity <laughs> they can stay there but they're not going to get anywhere they're not going to get into the spiritual world because they don't believe in any spirit and, and their concept of the soul you see sometimes the Buddhist master may speak about the soul but they speak about the soul in a manner that the soul can be annihilated it can be destroyed that it's temporary it's material they don't think, speak of the soul as being eternal as being spiritual so what to do does that answer your question? You mean by now? Ah, easy. Thank you, Guru. Uh, Guru Day, I have another question. Just Guru said, when we are in the Lord of the Lord, we should have a good and right attitude to the Lord of the Lord. Please, Guru Day, give us a more detailed explanation of what is the right attitude to the Lord. 详细解析一下什么叫正确和恰当的心态呢? <laughs> she's asking what is the proper attitude we should have when we take prasadam? What would be the correct approach to prasadam? Well, as we said in the prayer, that our attitude should be that of all the senses my tongue is the most voracious and difficult to con you know understand the nature of the tongue and understand Lord Krishna has been so kind he has sent us this nice prasadam so now let us take this prasadam to our full satisfaction and by so doing glorify their Lordship Sri Sri Radha and Krishna so that should be our mood in taking prasadam you just meditate on those words of the prayer and remember the meaning of the prayer and that will be the right attitude to take prasadam we honor 
prasadam. We don't just take prasadam, we honour it. It is the mercy of Lord Krishna. So we take it with respect. Like sometimes we say respect prasadam. It's a, a great fortune, it's a great blessing to take the Lord's prasada, the remnants of the Lord. It has been touched by the lips of Krishna. So we should understand this food, this, this food grain, this foodstuffs are very special because Lord Krishna himself has honoured this prasada. So maybe even the saliva of Krishna is there in the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Narada, what is the identity of Narada Muni? Is he a friend of Lord Krishna? An eternal associate of Lord Krishna. Or, or a Jiva. Well, Jivas can also be eternal associates of Lord Krishna. You know, there are Nitya Mukta, liberated Jivan Mukta, liberated souls in the spiritual world. And so it can be a Jiva, yeah. Why not? He's not, you know, there's, there's Jiva Tattva and Vishnu Tattva. He's not Vishnu Tattva, so <laughs> it'd be like Jiva. He's a Jiva Tattva. Well, they're also Nityamuktas, right? Eternally liberated souls. And whenever Lord Krishna comes, they come as his parents. So are, are they jivas? Are you asking? Are they, what is their position? Eternal, eternal associate. Of? Is he an eternal associate of Lord Vishnu? Well, yes, we're all eternal associates, but we've fallen in the material world, right? We're all connected to Krishna. Krishna says, Aham Bijaprad, I am the father of all living entities. So we're all connected. It's just some of us have fallen into the material world, but the vast majority of souls are in the spiritual world. We are the fallen souls. <laughs> I've never heard that there's potong, potong de jiva. Potong de jiva, kai chami narada muni. No, uh, well, I never heard about an ordinary person becoming narada muni. It's, but I don't think Narada Muni is a, is a position like what the four Kumaras or Lord Shiva are. The four Kumaras and Lord Shiva and Indra and the King of Heaven, you know, those are positions. Yamaraj, it's a position. Narada Muni, I've never heard that that is a position. That could you become Narada Muni in your next life or could we, any of us, become Narada Muni? Were we ever Narada Muni? Never heard that. Yeah. 
he, be he became the son of Brahma. Now previously he was not Narada Muni, but now he's Narada Muni and he's traveling and he's traveling and preaching. He's the eternal, he's a spaceman, right? going from place to place. And he can take part in Krishna's pastimes. So it's a, he's a very special personality. And he is one of, one of the authorities in devotional service. Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. I don't know. I don't know actually. It can be said that somebody could become Narada Muni. Certainly, you know, you, can be, you could become Yamaraj, you could become Brahma, you could become Lord Brahma, you could become even one of the four Kumaras, but I don't know. But does anybody know? No. No. Don't know. We never heard. I'll try to. I'll have to ask some people their opinion about that. Interesting question. Yes. Yeah. Previously he was a Gandharva. That was one birth. And then next birth he became the son of a maidservant. And then after that, then he became Narada Muni. So now he's Narada Muni. Uh -huh. Huh? What? Even though he's in the material world. What? He has some kind of a previous relationship with the Supreme Lord before he took the case, a uh, curse, and born into a ordinary human being, right? That's why he got an opportunity to become a well, he was a Gandharva, but it, it, we, I never heard that he was an intimate associate of the Lord. He was a Gandharva, and he could sing nicely, but we were not told that he was an intimate associate. There are many Gandharvas, and it's a higher planet, but, you know, still, doesn't mean he was closely connected to the Lord. That came only after he got the association with the Bhaktivedantas. He got association with the Bhaktivedantas, with the sadhus who came to his house. He got their association and then he practiced, he followed their teachings and he practiced. And then the next life he became the son of Brahma. And as the son of Brahma, he was Narada. And he was the deep devotion, devotee. He, he's the, the man to teach devotional service. Brahma had many sons, but none of them are like Narada. Narada is a very special son of Brahma. And he's the one who's teaching devotional service everywhere. So you may be right. It may be it's a position, I don't know, but I've never heard this before. I'll try to find out. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada, Kita. Hare Krishna.